Howdy there, Dan. Hey, John. Uh, what's the matter, you old cauliflower, you? Oh, well, I, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just having a really hard time um, thinking of, of an episode for this week, uh, which, you know, I'm not used to feeling this way. Typically, the episodes go so seamlessly and effortlessly. Hmm. Yeah, turn into the old library for inspiration? Well, yeah, that was the idea. You know, I'm finding some really interesting books that I think could help us a lot. Uh, right here we have uh, Retirement and Social Security, Volume 50. But then they also have Retirement and Social Security, Volume 50 and a half, uh, Sections 179, uh, well, through 179. Uh, yes, a true classic of the genre. Right, and then there's uh, Retirement and Social Security, Volume 50 and a half, Sections 180 to, 140, to 408. Ooh, boy. Steer clear of that one. Well, what's wrong with that one? Well, everyone knows that Section 215 is when the, the whole thing went awry. Mm. It just sank. What a shame. Mm hmm. You're telling me. Hmm. Ah, drop back to the old drawing board, right? <laughs> well, Dan, I'd uh, love to lend you a helping hand, but I'm afraid that I got my nose in a book of my own. What does your hand and your nose have to do with each other? Yes. Well, you see, it's a little thing called the World Factbook. Hmm. I already know everything that's in here, but figured I'd make sure that everybody else is up to snuff. Uh, that's very honorable of you. Mm. Well, I'm an honorable man. Mm hmm <sighs> You know, John. Yeah? Think about how much fun we're having here, just, just spending time in the library, talking about books. Well, I reckon this is the gayest time I've had since the plague. Yeah, and you know, I think that I should open a library. No. Mm, close, Dan. Oh, okay. Uh, what, what, what's wrong with that? Mm, keep, keep trying. What are we going to do this, uh, this year episode about? Oh, ooh, ooh, okay, okay. Libraries. No. The snakes uh, of the world. Uh, Le leaves, f uh, fictitious things, magma, okay, uh, the, the nature of existential existence in and of itself. Uh, the French Revolution, bric-a-brac. Mm, barking up the wrong gum tree. Well, what about just the mighty brick? No. What about, uh... No. Poles? No. What about literature? Don't do it! Don't do it! And if you're gonna do it, make sure you do it in bills! None of it's real! It's all fake! It's wrong! Mike! Well, that was a good read. Oh. Don't do it! Why isn't anyone doing anything? Somebody please help! Somebody help me! Help me! Don't do it! Do it! Do it! Well, actually, it's just bricks and concrete! There's not even anywhere to go! Walls! Stop! I'm, 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 and I'm making complaints! Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna pause and just take a look at it. Okay, so welcome back, everyone. So keeping in, uh, uh, in tune with our holiday theme. We have here uh, two literature professors who have nothing to do with uh, the holidays per se, uh, but in fact are part of the literature department because that's the theme of this week's episode. And uh, happy holidays to you all. Uh, so, uh, why don't you just introduce yourself so everybody uh, knows what we're dealing with here. I'm Dolores so Buck and I'm an adjunct in the literature department and I'm going into my fourth year in that position. And I'm Tony Domestico. I'm an assistant professor in the literature department, just finishing up my third semester here. Mm. Is, is that Italian? It is. Is that Italian for teal, uh, seal tamer? Uh, no, I actually think it's Italian for, I think it might mean manatee tamer. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. No, it's I wasn't some, sure. Some other sea creature, yeah. Well, that's as far as I've gotten in my uh, French class, so I was trying to see if I can get the, get the ball rolling with you here. Yeah. But we're not here to discuss languages. That's next season. Uh-huh. Here, we're, we're here to discuss literature. And uh, my censors told me that I need to ask one question that, you're, uh, that the administration will approve of. So I have uh, here a sort of um, layered question that I'd like to ask both of you about the department in general. Uh, so, you know, first of, first of all, just... 
let's do this thing. What's the department all about? So it's about reading, but, but what else? Like, what's, what's the, the zeitgeist of the literature department? <laughs> well, there was a time when I was here, because I was a student at Purchase a long time ago, that lit people thought that they could basically do anything when they left. Mm -hmm. And people laughed at us because everyone was on a career track and it was like, you're a lit major, what are you going to do with that? And we just felt like, well, if you know how to read well and analyze and write well, you can present yourself anywhere for a job. Mm -hmm. And that was true. All right. And Tony, what do you got? Yeah, I mean, I think, I think the Purchase Literature Department, like any good literature department, is basically going to teach you to read and write and think critically and I mean, ideally, right, I, I think many of the classes are looking at works, essentially asking, you know, what, what, what is beautiful, what is meaningful, and those are the kinds of conversations that we're having in class. Yeah. So per both preparing you to be, you know, successful in the job market, but also to be a, a, an interesting human being, I would say. Yes, and I think probably looking at the human condition in great works of literature as well as what we're looking at today and trying to make some connection for the kids. Great. So, so, so not just in a, in a, uh, a book-tastical sense, but also in just a more general uh, world sense you're we, looking to we uncover. Love we love book book tastics yeah. The, yeah, the, the, the study of book tastics great, yes. But so that's sort of your goal then, to be able to uncover beauty and meaning, not just perhaps in books, but in all things. In all things. Oh. Well, that's and something. even in our students. Oh, good. Well, that, that, that's... Occasionally, yeah. Uh, right. Well, that's comforting. As, as long as I know the goal is there somewhere. Especially yeah. at the end of the term. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah they're going to seem a lot more beautiful <laughs> a, week from, a week from now, once the papers are done. You hear that, kids? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, okay. Uh, well, that sounds fun. Now, uh, but then, of course, these students, you know, they're always talking cool, you know? And so I, I think uh, a lot of people would be interested to know, like, in your opinion, what are, like, the cool classes that our Purchase Literature Department offers for us? Well, I think right now I've heard that Tony's classes are really cool. Kids really want to go into Tony's classes. So I don't know. What is cool, Tony? What is cool? I think any, anything, uh, anything that grapples with those big questions that we were talking about, you know, what is beautiful, what is meaningful, um, I know Lee Schlesinger teaches a bunch of classes in which those those questions are um, very much alive on Emerson, on Faulkner, on on the Bible, on the Bible, on the Bi Yeah, the Bible is. Well, I don't know if it's it's popular. I, gu I guess it, the the Bible is cool. I feel like it has some yeah. sense of cool. Yeah, like sort of a you know a laid back kind of cool. Yeah, doesn't even have to try. It's just you know it's very devil may care the Bible. Yeah, yeah. Especially the way Lee teaches it. Well, doesn't Lee also have a whole course on birds? He does. I think this might be the first time for that. Am I right or not? No, I, th I, think, sure. it was, I think it's been taught in the past. It has, yeah. yeah um, he's, he's really knowledgeable about birds. Yeah, yeah and, and birds are certainly certainly cool. Looking uh, at them, studying them, writing about them, thinking I think about just them. seeing the topic is like, oh, yeah, let me yeah. get in there. What's this all about? What's yeah. the connection? Sure. What's it have to do with literature? Well, and you can find out if you take uh, Lee Schlesinger's bird class. I like how you're advertising his class, but your class, you're like, no way. <laughs> just just stay, stay out of here. I'll, I'll like you students more if you don't take it, <laughs> seems to be the theme here. But all right, but that all sounds good. Okay, so now I got some questions for you. Let's get to the real nitty-gritty. Okay. okay? Um, now, I'm, I could have come here and asked you your favorite book, but I don't want to, because that seems easy. Now, what I'm curious about is if there's a book you just don't like. Like, if the book were a person, and, you know, then you kind of knew them, and then you went to a party at, like, an acquaintance's house, and then you were there, and that book person walked in, and you would just go, Ugh, them. I don't like them. What would that book be for you? What would it be for you? On the Road. On the road. Ah, okay. All right. Yeah. Spill the beans. Why? Why? I don't know. I, th I think On the Road is one of those books that if you read it at the right moment, right, when you're 16 and you're really unhappy with your family and you think everyone is trying to hold you back and you want to go on this grand road trip across the country, it can be unbelievably, uh, well, absolutely formative. But if you come to it just a little bit later, and I came to it when I was a 22-year-old graduate student, just totally uninteresting, totally uninteresting. 
I, um, I, this is going to be how I sell this interview, by the way. Literature professor says on the road sucks. That's going to be exactly. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 I wouldn't say it sucks, but I would say for for me, um, yeah, it's just it's it doesn't move me. Okay. Uh, it doesn't. I don't find the writing compelling. Um, I don't know if you know, but Kerouac basically was. I think he was on amphetamines. You're just kind of on amphetamines, sitting there constantly typing, and that's what it reads like. And that's not what I want out of it. And so it doesn't even move you to take a road trip, not even. Like, that book turns you off to road trips, even? Yeah, and I, and I love road trips. Not I, anymore. I, I love road trips right now because I haven't read Kerouac in about, well, eight years. So that book tested your love for road trips? Yeah. Absolutely true. So if you love road trips, beware. All right? Because on the road, it, it, it did what Jaws did to sharks with the road trip, is what you're saying. I think that's, that's a fair assessment, yeah. All right. Well, Dolores, uh, I, I, I'm not going to forget about you. What book do you just eat? Well, at? you know, I, I really don't think there's anything I hate, but I think Tony said something that kind of hit it. If it doesn't move me, I don't know that I hate it, but I've read books where everyone is such hype on this book. This book is so great. You need to read it. And it's like, I don't know. But I don't think I could hate the person who wrote it when they walk in. Oh, that's not, I'm not, it's not, nothing about, no, 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 it's not the person who wrote the book, it's, it's the, the book, book itself. itself. In a human form, it'd come in and you'd say, oh, them, that, that, that person who's the book in our metaphor. Okay. Yeah. But you don't have um, a book like that. There are several, but I really can't call them up right now. I mean, some of Henry James' books, it's like, oh, everyone, no. yes, I know, I'm going to have here, we'll have an <laughs> argument. Uh, I think they're good, but the hype over it, like, when I was in school that you need to read this, you need to do it, and it's after like, why? Like for me, the best book I've probably ever read in my life was Beloved, and I think everyone should read it. Other people feel like, what is it all about? I don't understand it, but James I like, but I don't love him. Yeah, The Portrait of a Lady is one of those books for me. I think everyone should have to read and love The Portrait of a Lady. Well, you have to read it, but you don't have to love it. Yeah, me. you don't have to, but you should. I literally have no idea what they're talking about. You could now be speaking in that language we were talking about earlier, which I mused was French, but wasn't for comedic effect. And you could be speaking that, and I, it would do the same for me. Like, this is just so... I thought so... he was speaking Italian. Is well, there something wrong with me? Or you just uh, there's nothing Italian? wrong with any of us. Yeah. We're all great, except that none of us want to go on road trips together anymore. <laughs> or, or by ourselves, B apparently. But here's the point. The point is that I don't want to put you on the spot and make you call out a book. I don't want to do that to you. But I understand. But if, if the book doesn't move you, then it's just not doing it for you. If it you. doesn't move me, it's not doing it, and why bother reading it? It's the same with music. If you listen to music and there's no feeling or, or you're not moved in any way, or you don't come away from it with some profound message, what's the point? Dolores, I, I am so happy you said that because that's a perfect segue into my next question. That's I like, can just imagine yeah. what it is. Okay, here we go. All right. Woo! Okay, here, here's a, here's it gonna be. Okay. So now, if your favorite literary movement were a band or music group of any sort, what band would they be, and where can I see them play? My God, this is a bad one for me because. I don't know too many bands that you would know. Well, Definitely not. Dolores, I, I, I have to, it's, it's really, it's because it's, it's not a very good question. It's a very odd question, and I mean, I probably couldn't answer it. I'm putting this on you to answer it, but I definitely you couldn't. You would know better. You're yeah. young and into it. Huh. Uh, but I wrote it, so it's, it's going. Yeah. Yeah. Tony, hit me with it. So, I guess my two, my two favorite literary movements are modernism, mm -hmm. kind of, mainly British literature from the 1920s and 1930s, and I, I read a lot and write a lot on contemporary literary fiction as well. So uh, let's go with contemporary literary fiction. If that were a band, it would be something like, I think it would be The National. Um, so uh, kind of symphonic, sometimes uh, overly whiny, uh, always interesting, uh, consuming lots of white wine, um, yeah. Great. Yeah, and where, where, where should you see them? I guess I'd say, 
I'd say Toads in New Haven, just because I live in New Haven and I've seen lots of bands. Like and this is where we get like Toads, New Haven, Connecticut. Yeah, exactly. like we yeah I'm, I'm, I'm pushing that. We'll put that in later. Pro probably not. But I, you know what? I take it back. That was a great question. That was awesome what you just did. That was very exciting totally. watching you do that. That was cool. Wow. Okay. Good. Actually, you know what? what? Oh my God. Sorry, but I, just to bring everything full circle, my other, probably my other favorite contemporary band, The Hold Steady have an amazing, so their, maybe their best album, Boys and Girls in America, starts off with the lyric, there are nights when I think that Saul Paradise was right, Boys and Girls in America, they have such a sad time together, which is a quote from On the Road. So the Would Hold Steady hate, appreciates right? <laughs> On the Road. I appreciate the Hold Steady and hate On the Road. T Tony, can I shake your hand for a second? That was very <laughs> impressive. That was very amazing watching you do that. Uh, Dolores, uh, it's one nothing right now. No, I'm uh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm I was going to say, like, Glenn Miller. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, okay, Glenn Miller. Glenn Miller. Um, I don't know how I would bring that into a literary thing. Let's think of the time. I don't know. Do you like how I'm quizzing your professors right now, maybe, some of you? This is, this and is yeah, exciting. Yeah, they haven't handed in their papers, so this must be really fantastic for yeah, them. Yeah, this is like, ah, sweet redemption. redemption. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I'm not I get thinking of like 20s and 30s literature. Carrie. All right. I, I can I can dig with that. Yeah. And where would we see it? Probably down in the Bowery. Awesome. All right. There we go. All right. I like it. I like that a lot. You know what? I was very sure. I was like, I, I I was amazed that you two would even take on this question. I was like, this has this has no merit. What are we doing with this? No. I feel good about it now. I feel like I learned something. So thank you. Thank you so much. But that sounds like I'm done with question. I'm not. Um, so uh, now, what literary character then? So we got the literary movements. We got the books you hate. But now what literary character would you want to have as a guest speaker in your class? Uh -huh. I, I'm really going for the gold this week with the questions. I'm really. Molly Bloom. OK. Why would I want to have her? Yeah, yeah, go on. Um, I just think she's the epitome of sexuality or a sensuous, a sensuous woman that today kids would look and say, what and in what way, but she is. I mean, I think her last speech in uh, Ulysses is just worth everything. Yeah. Sounds like an exciting As class. a matter of yeah. fact, I'm going to say, um, I'm pretty sure, I'm not sure of the date, but somewhere in the 80s, they had a 100th, 100th anniversary for James Joyce here, and they had Colleen Dewhurst read Molly Bloom. And it was one of the most effective, I think, sexy, if you want, um, speeches I've ever heard. She was fantastic. All right. That, that seems perfectly reasonable to me. I, 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 I like that answer. Now, Tony, over to you. Well, if we're going to have Molly, who's upping the sexiness quotient of, of the campus, I guess I'd have uh, Strether from The Ambassadors from another Henry James yes. novel just to, to low, lower the sexiness. Right. Just to, just to, to balance to... it out. If, yeah, Molly's all body and he's all intellect. I don't right? have the literary knowledge to know if you're throwing digs at each other. I just don't know. Yeah, you're like, yeah, Henry see... James, ha ha ha. I'm, I'm just trying to get someone from well, James he's on all the to intellect, antagonize Dolores. But yeah. she has something that everyone wants. That's very true. So I think she's probably the more popular. You'd she, have her over for dinner, right? I absolutely would. Yeah, yeah no, and I don't think Strether would be a, a pop. I think he'd be a deadly speaker. Yeah, he definitely yeah. would be. But... Anyway. I would wish well, to be a speaker in your class. Yeah, like a guest speaker, you know, just yeah, someone to come in and so. give a presentation. Yeah, I think yeah. that John would have liked that if I had had her come. Yeah. Yeah, and it would be good if Strether came to my class because then they would realize no matter how long I'm going on speaking, Someone I'm much more succinct more. and to the point than Strether. Than yeah. Strether is. Well, good. Okay. So I don't have, I have no way of knowing whether any of this is true or not, but I like the sound of it, and, and, and um, it, all, it all sounds good. That's so exciting. Okay. So finally, gosh, who, how, in what way am I qualified to be talking about this? Uh, <laughs> finally. <clears throat> do you ever look at an e-reader and just want to chuck it out a window? Yes or no? Yes. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Good. All right. That's right. With e-readers. 
And that was the last question. I only read them on a plane. Yeah! <laughs> Play, uh, planes. What, 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 so you could have like a lot of... Yeah, it's the idea of not carrying loads of things with you. Big, heavy books, whatever. Okay, that, well that makes sense. All right, then I guess I'm less mad at e-readers now. But still a little miffed! Well, why are you? Because you don't have the feel of a book? I don't know! It's just the people always say that they're bad. Are they bad? I mean, I don't, I don't think they're... I think they're bad if they replace physical books. I don't think they're bad if they supplement physical books. They do replace them. No, though. right. You see the bookstores that are closed. You look at you go down Central Avenue. I think you have two Barnes and Nobles closed. That is the saddest thing in the world. Yeah, but those then, but those aren't closed because of e-readers. Those are closed because of Amazon. Amaz Amazon, Amazon is the yes. thing that needs to be Amazon thrown out the is the big culprit. And I'm just gonna say, I, th uh, this conversation could continue in the comment section of the video. But I'm so happy you were both here to, to propose these ideas with me. It's been, I, I, I feel it's been a very enriching experience for me. And uh, I'm just so grateful to both of you. But well, thank you. I think it's been more enriching for me. <laughs> yes, has, it been, has it been more enriching for you than it was for Dolores? I am I'm petting him. Yeah, yeah I, I, th I think a tie. Yeah, I think okay. It's it's a tie. You know what? I like ending on a tie. That yeah. seems nice. Well, you both seem wonderful. I hope uh, that through this you could... If, if you want more students, you get more, and if you want less, you get less. Whatever you want, I hope you get it. We always and, want more students in Lit. Yeah, good. So, so Lit is great. You heard it here. Lots of cool classes. Check your course list. You got these two great professors right here. And, of course, their favorite Lee Schlesinger is also in the department. And, uh, yeah, so thank you both so much. I, I get And go at register now. You still have time, maybe, so go do it. But thank you. Oh, haha! <laughs> Just kidding. So here's what happened. Okay, here's why I'm so I'm so uh, in a in a in a tizzy. Uh, the King of Sketch did not show up today as he was attending a banquet. But we were just so fortunate in that the uh, very talented Jonathan Green happened to be walking around outside, and he will be here to fill time in our show. So that <laughs> surprise. Don't, uh, more surprises after this. All right, we'll, we'll be right back. Hello, the, um, oh, uh, um, uh, youngsters and oldsters of every age, um, uh, my name is, uh, uh, Jonathan Green, author of, uh, Fault of the Stars, book for youngsters, um, uh, and if, uh, you haven't read uh, my best-selling oh, novel, oh, Fault of the Stars, then perhaps you have seen the recent uh, hit film made of my book, uh, starring uh, Ansel Algort, oh, oh, um, a very uh, handsome young man, and or and also, what's your name? Dang, what's your name? Uh, Woody. And if you don't know me for my book or the film of my book, oh, then perhaps you know me. For my instructional YouTube videos where I talk about, oh, in your, what is this from? Um, does any, all, all, all that if you youngsters know where this is from? Oh, uh, from Romeo and Juliet, a classic story about young lovers. I'll show it to all of you now. Uh, Romeo, where fart thou, Romeo? And I'll no longer be a... I'll no longer be a... Uh, ca capule. Tis but thy name that is my enemy. Thou art thyself. Uh, not a... Uh, uh, Montague? What's Montague? Oh! Be some other name? What's in a name? 
that which we call a rose by any other name would smell <coughs> Daw off thy name. And for uh, that name, which is no part of thee, uh, take um, all myself. And, this, and that is just um, a little uh, flavor, a little taste of the world's greatest uh, um, movie magic, William Shakespeare. Uh, I don't, I'm sorry, I don't know how that... I didn't put that there, um, the Christianity. Uh, and this is um, for all of the young uh, women listening, all of the young girls. Um, the pearl of your youth. Um, take it. Take the virginity, girls. Please, uh, please. Um, and this is that's all I have to say about that, really. And, uh, and, uh, and now for a word about <coughs> a perk of being a wallflower. <laughs> Who needs it? <laughs> I'm almost at the end of my presentation. Um, and so I'd just like to share one more uh, little tidbit from my mind. A brand new work of literature that I have created. And it's called the... It, it's called the Jonathan Green Rap. My name is John Green and I'm here to say I love reading books in a serious way. No matter the shape, the length, or the size, I'll be reading books until the day of my demise. Yes, all you youngsters say reading's not for me. Well, you're gonna have to pay me a fee, because I love reading books. It's good for youngsters of any age. Now watch me as I go and turn my page. I choose John Green, and I'm here to say, I love reading books in a serious way. Uh, the, the, the shape or the size, I'll be reading books till the day of my life. And if John Green here to say, I love rusty metal car parts, it's the only way I can. Oh, oh. Um. Sorry. I, uh, I didn't. Uh, 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 stop, please. Please. Oh. I didn't, um, I didn't mean to say that. Uh, sorry. Yep. How about that? Well, good. We're back here with uh, Dolores and Tony, two of our uh, literature department professors, and they've just been wonderful. But, I mean... The show would not be called Interviewing Dan Rosensweet with Dan Rosensweet if we didn't interview Dan Rosensweet with Dan Rosensweet. Wouldn't you agree? I agree. Yeah. So uh, I was uh, hoping that you two might have some questions for me. I'm just going to throw this out of here. I was hoping that you two might have some questions for me that I could, uh, that I could give a go at. Well, you know, I've been thinking, like, if, he, if your family thought that you were a radio character, mm -hmm. who would you be? I would be uh, Dan Rosensweet from the famed radio show interviewing Dan Rosensweet with Dan Rosensweet. So I'm going to ask you another question and okay. we'll move on to Tony. It's like you don't have any problem with like feeling confident uh, at all, right? Uh, not uh, ever that I would admit publicly. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so to parrot your imaginative questioning, right, when you said your favorite literary movement as a band, where it would be playing. Mm -hmm. um, if you were a chain restaurant, what chain restaurant would you be and where would you be located? 
Um, well, I find, I, I don't know, I tend to find some issues with chain restaurants in general uh, because they're all chained together and people can trip. Uh, but uh, I guess everybody seems to like Chipotle, so I'm just going to hop on that bandwagon. And you said, where would I be located? Yeah. Right here in PTV. Because I want as many people here enjoying uh, this, this place as possible. And uh, I would also locate uh, the rest of the chains on Channel 69. Uh, which is what th this channel is. And then you could all go to Channel 69 and watch things like this and other things that are similar and different and uh, also get Chipotle while you're at it. How about that? Sounds Apples. good. We'll be there. Good. I'm so glad to hear that. And, and I'm so glad that you've both been here today uh, during the holiday season but not at all acknowledging it. It's been a real pleasure talking to both of you. And uh, We are. Yeah, but, but here we are. Now we're acknowledging it. Ha-ha. Being assaulted by it. Yeah. Yeah, it's great. But, uh, yeah, that's right. It totally fell. It was great. Uh, what a zany program. So, uh, yeah, so thank you so much. Thank you. I, I, I wish you both a, a happy holiday season. I'm excited to see both of you in the next semester. Uh, I will definitely come and, uh, and barge in on your classes at some point. And, uh, I would love it. Yeah, you can count on that. Okay. But in the meantime, uh, you know, well, I'll see you soon, and and I'll see all, all of you soon. You have a happy ha happy holiday season as well. And uh, before we go, we have a little music for you from one of our uh, music conservatory students here at Purchase. Stay with us. We are here now with Rachel Chavat, a uh, conservatory music uh, person, yes, major uh, here at SUNY Purchase. And, uh, yes? Yes. Oh, whew, okay. So I got it. Whew. All right. Because that's a lot of things to keep track of. But, I, but it's all good. Anything you want to add just uh, right off the bat here? Um, yes. Excitement is all we're looking to add right now. Well, before we uh, delve into your excitement uh, through music, uh, I, there was one question I wanted to ask you. Now, today we've been exploring the theme of literature. Okay. Yes? So uh, I thought uh, I wanted to include you in the fun. Uh, I thought I'd start by asking you, you know, a pretty uh, standard question, uh, and that would be, uh, what is your favorite book? Um, I don't really have a favorite book, mm -hmm. but like a book that is kind of, I'm not even sure what it's called, but mm -hmm. like it's close to my heart, um, is this anthology of poetry by Walt Whitman and Emily Dickinson that um, I got when I was little. Mm -hmm. And so, like, it's not my favorite, but it kind of like introduced me to poetry, so. Well, it sounds lovely. Yeah. Okay. So so now let let me so I want to shake things up a little bit. Now, what is your least favorite book? Um, my least favorite book is um definitely Twilight. <laughs> I mean, just <laughs> or like that whole series. You really had this answer like prepared, didn't yeah. you? You were like, yeah. <laughs> Think about it. I hate that book. No, I mean, just I don't want to get like too gloomy. Yeah. But I just feel like um it gives young girls a very bad idea of what a relationship should look like. So I, to be honest, I've never like read through them or anything, but just from what I have read, I it's just like you. Seems like a perfectly logical reason to hate a book. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So my final question. Okay. So we have this book of poetry, and we have this awful book. Yes. And uh, if you had to burn one book and eat the other, which ones would you choose? I'd probably eat the Twilight book just because it's smaller than the poetry book. So that'd be less eating paper. That's the right answer. Okay. Very well done. Good. You've earned your slot on the show. Thank you. Good. You see how I'm, I've been doing that? So we, so we know. No, I just, I like to make sure everyone really deserves their time. And through that, you prove to me <laughs> that you have it. Okay. You have what it takes. And I'm excited to see what, what, what you do with it. Thanks. I feel prepared now. Good. Okay. And, and just, just before you start, just let us know. Uh, so what are you going to be playing? Um, I'm going to be playing a song that I wrote called Brooklyn Kid. Hey, all right. Yeah, repping Brooklyn. Yeah, BK all day. <laughs> yeah, uh, great. Okay, well, well, I'm sure that'll be well received. And okay. uh, I'm excited to hear it. Thank so, you. Without further ado. And I'll leave this here for you. Should I just jump in? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Just, just don't break your guitar. Okay.
That was a beautiful song. Thank you. Yeah, that was a gorgeous song. Now, I, I got to believe you have more gorgeous songs. Okay. Yeah. Or, I mean, you, I you don't have to say so. I'm going to go ahead believing it. Okay. But you have more songs. Yeah. I'm glad to hear it. Uh -huh. Now, please let everyone know if they'd like to access these songs, where they should go. Um, well, if you want to get updates on my music or anything, I have, well, currently, I have a Facebook music page, and you can find that on Facebook under Rachel Shavat, and Shavat is spelled C-H-E-V-A-T. So. Okay, so there you go. So uh, that's, that's Brooklyn Kid? Yes. So Brooklyn Kid and more on the Rachel Shavat Facebook page. Now, uh, Rachel, uh, I uh, didn't tell you this, and uh, you, you may or may not know, but this is actually the last episode of this season. Oh, really? That you are currently... Uh, that, that you've just played a song on. So, uh, the, you know, an exciting moment. I'm honored. Uh, yeah, and, and I'm honored to have you. And uh, our manager, the manager of the show, is going to come on now and just uh, has, has a few things to say uh, as we prepare to... Yeah, I have a few things to say. Uh, I was... Okay. Um, first, um, uh, ma'am, I'd like to say thank you um, for that uh, classy performance. You reminded me of a... Uh, a young uh, Gerbil Gerba, who was a true talent, and I loved her, and I miss her, and now I'm stuck with you. But I wanted to talk about that being stuck with you a little bit, as mm -hmm. this is the last episode of this particular uh, season of this program, and why um, Dave 
No. Dan. Dan. Um, I wanted to tell you that this season was not the most terrible experience of my life. Now, it's no, uh, no Gerda Gerbil, but, uh... No, it's no Gerbo Girdle. Yeah. <laughs> but, um... I, I, I appreciate that, uh, John. I know how hard that is for you to say. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But, well. And, uh... Well, uh... And I want you to know that you are like a great, great, great... That's three greats grandson to me. You're not as great as he was, mm -hmm. but you do remind me of my great, great, great grandson. Uh, how's he doing? It's... So thank you. And thank you. Uh, well, I guess we'll never know how that other grandson is doing. Yeah. But, um, well, uh, I'm going uh, to go wash my face. Okay. But before we, we do that, um, Merry Christmas. Happy Hanukkah. Uh, enjoy your holiday season. Yes. Uh, you as well, Rachel. Thank you. And of course to everyone. Uh, to all you Dans out there, have a, have, a, have a happy, happy time with whatever it is you're doing. Uh, and uh, that'll be it for now. But, of course, tune in next time, which will be in a while from now. In the meantime, you could just watch the show, uh, what we have. You know, and it's not going to be new, but, you know, comfort is nice, familiarity is nice. And, uh, and maybe while you're watching our show, you could also uh, listen to some Rachel Shavat music. So, you, can, you know, you can mix two, two good things there. Yeah. You know. Cool. All right. Definitely. And I'm, I'm still not sold, but I, I think I, I may be on, on this show mostly. Your music, yes, but, um, but um, the manager tells me the show needs some work. But uh, that's fine. Well, thank you for having me. Yeah, and thank you for being here, and thank you for being you, and you, and you, and you, and the rest of you. Have a good day, or night.